गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन ओके सो Okay, good morning, students. How are you all? I hope everyone is fine. Okay, so today we are going to start a new chapter. New chapter that is that means the second part of the chapter, the lesson, the sound of music that we have already done. The first part. The first part, uh, Adrian Bell's part is already done. Today we will start the new uh, second part that is the Shehnai of Bismillah Khan. Okay. So, good morning, Marcy. Okay, so uh, I think you already have the book. You take up your book page number 21. So we will learn about this Mullah Khan today. Good morning, Mirban. Yes. Good morning, Monsoon. I you just write your. Own name, so I can recognize you. Okay, I'm waiting for everyone to come so that I can start the new chapter. Good morning, Ibrahim. Okay, everyone is here. So, shall I start it? Okay, so now let's start our chapter. Today we will start the Shehnai of Bismillah Khan. Whenever we talk about Shehnai, what comes in your mind? Just tell me what comes in your mind whenever you will talk, whenever you hear the name Shehnai. What imagination comes in your mind? Just reply. Whenever we talk about shehnai, or uh, uh, as it is a musical instrument, shehnai, what comes in our mind? I think many of you may think of a song, okay? Isn't it? You like a sehra, suhana lagta hai. That was a very popular song. Yeah. Yes, it's a musical instrument. Yes, of course. Uh, whenever we talk about Shehnai, this uh, one thing comes in our mind is Bismillah Khan, because Bismillah Khan and Shehnai are very much correlated with each other. We have often seen Bismillah Khan playing Shehnai, and he was the one to bring Shehnai uh, in front of the uh, on the stage. Okay, on the stage, he has brought Shehnai on the stage. But before that, shehnai was just a musical instrument, which is actually played in the marriages, temples, and all, isn't it? We have heard often. We have heard many times in the marriage or in any temples, uh, the playing of this instrument, shehnai. Yeah. But today we can say that not only in uh, temple or not only in the marriages, but also we have seen this instrument. Played by Bismillah Khan in the stage, is not it? So, though we have not seen the live performance and all, but we have seen, we have watched it in television and all, the playing of uh, Sahnai by Bismillah Khan, and we have many other uh, musician, similar musician. Okay, so now, uh, like just uh, he's uh, Bismillah Khan. He was he was the Sahnai maestro. 
uh, it please he was the one who has actually brought this shehnai on the stage but before that people had not people had only known that shehnai is played in the temples or in a marriage okay so let's start this uh, this name emperor aurangzeb who has actually ruled our uh, ruled india uh, during it is during the mughal period it is during when mughal ruled india uh, it is during that time okay what actually happened what what is the story related with shehnai during the mughal period so let's know first about this one okay so emperor aurangzeb banned the playing of the musical instrument called pungi in the royal residence of fort it had a shrill unpleasant unpleasant sound so uh, we have heard the name aurangzeb is not it aurangzeb uh, he was the emperor during the mughal period and he banned the playing of a musical instrument called pungi you have heard the name pungi is not it not it there is a song about pungi bajadunda and all this period okay in the royal residence but it aurangzeb aurangzeb he banned the playing of pungi and why he banned it banned this musical instrument because it gives a very shrill and pleasant sound it doesn't give a very uh, like attractive sound it, uh, it doesn't give very beautiful or pleasant sound it gives a very shrill and pleasant sound nobody actually likes the sound of pungi and that's why there is a saying pungi bajade na isn't it uh, so it is not the good one okay so pungi became the generic name for reeded noise maker and it had become a uh, a very a uh, reeded uh, a name has been given to this pungi a name given to a class as a group no like uh, it is given uh, as a noise maker it just create a noise it doesn't give any pleasant or it doesn't entertain anybody uh, it just gives a uh, it just produce very like unpleasant sound okay so a name has been put a name has been given to this instrument pungi uh, as a noise maker so few had thought that it would one day be revived so many of them they thought that it would one day again be returned back to aurangzeb had banned the playing of pungi but maybe one day this will be uh, maybe people will again start this music this uh, pungi one day a barber of a family of professional musician who had assisted the royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pungi so now here we uh, we, have, we see that a barber of course if a, we, a barber he just thought to just improve the tonal quality of this pungi he want to change this pungi okay he want to change the sound of the pungi so now how a barber can actually barber what a barber does a barber what is the actually work of a barber cutting the hair is not good. but now here how barber comes how barber will actually uh change this pungi to some other musical instrument how it is possible for a barber yes it is possible because this barber is actually his background his family are actually a professional musician though he he was a barber in the royal palace but his family the, if we see the background of this barber uh, his family uh, are all professional musician they uh, belong to professionally belong to a professional musician family and he had a very a good uh, relation with the royal palace as he has to come every time there uh, so he decided he decided one day that he will improve the tune of this pungi as it create a very bad sound he will just he will just uh, change this tone uh, and make it a little bit uh, beautiful or attractive one so that it will not create such kind of sound so he decided one day So what he did, he chose a pipe with a natural hollow stem that was longer and broader than the pungi. So what he did, he just select a pipe with a natural hollow stem. He brought a like pipe. Uh, it was longer. It was longer than the pungi, and also broader than it. And they have natural hollow. Hollow means you can say uh, hole on the both side of this stick. A stick you can say or a pipe you can say both side of a that pipe. So it has a natural hole, hole. So he thought that he will change this pungi and he will make some different thing from that, so that people will be attracted towards the sound of this uh, instrument. So he brought a pipe which has already had the hole on both of the uh, side, 
and it was longer and broader than the punt. And then he made some seven holes on the body of that pipe. On the body of that pipe, he made some seven holes, as we see in the flute and all. No, some holes. So similarly, he made some holes on that body of that pipe. And and then what he did when he played on it and he started playing, he just started uh, experimenting on the sound of this uh, pipe. So he just played on it, closing and opening some of these holes. So he just closed the holes. Some of the holes and opened some of the holes and started playing that pipe, and then soft and melodious sound were produced. And then suddenly he realized that there a very soft and melodious sound can be heard from this pipe. He played the instrument before royalty, and then after making when he thought when he uh, saw that it actually gives a very beautiful sound, then he just came to the royal uh, royal palace. And then he played this instrument before the royalty, before everyone. Okay, he played the instrument. People, uh, many people, they actually thought that how a barber, how uh, this barber can actually change the sound of this kumbhi. But he did it. And then he brought and he played it in the in front of the royal uh, royalty. And then everyone were impressed with the sound of this instrument. They all loved the sound of this instrument. And then the instruments. Uh, and the instrument so different from pungi had to be given a new name now already uh, it was actually uh, barber he thought that he will change the tonal quality of pungi but when he just uh, played the that pipe everyone saw that it it gives a very beautiful and pleasant sound so everyone was impressed with that and then they thought that as this instrument looks very different to the pungi it, it is not at all similar to pungi Shape and size, everything is different to Pungi. So then they thought that they should give a new name to this um, pipe. They thought that they have, they will give some new name to this musical instrument. And then, as the story goes, so then the name has been changed. This Pungi's name has been changed, and it was changed into here. We can see as the story goes, since it was first played in the Shah's chamber. And was played by a nai, that means Baba. The instrument was named as Shahnai. And then a Shahnai. How a Shahnai was brought actually? Uh, as it was now, people thought that they will, as this um, uh, pungi is totally different from this pipe, what the barber has made. So they thought that they will change the name. And then, as we have seen the story, that it was made by a barber. This. Uh, Musical instrument was made by a barber, and it was played in front of the royal before the first time. It was played in front of the uh, shah in the shah's chamber. Okay, as it was played in the shah's chamber, and it was played by a nai. In Hindi, we say barber means nai, not it? So as it was played by a nai, so they they then the instrument was named after uh, that uh, after thinking how old was he, and then they named it as shah nai. Shah, the Shahka, and Nai, as it was actually played, uh, made by the barber, so the name was called Shah Nai. Clear, everyone? Do you have any problem uh, in any difficulty in understanding this part? If you have any difficulty, just uh, write it down so that I can repeat the things again. Okay, so in this way, the Shah Nai came first for the first time. Okay, Kumbi was changed uh, into Shah Nai in such a Way. Okay, clear everyone. Okay, so after that, okay, once again, okay, I will just uh, repeat it. So, in the first paragraph, you can see that we just uh, we are actually introduced to Aurangzeb, Emperor Aurangzeb, who was a ruler at that time in India, Mughal ruler. So he banned the playing of pungi. Okay, there was an instrument as in the uh, royalty in the royal residence. Every time some instruments are uh, they have some program is organized every time. Okay, uh, so here the playing of a musical instrument, uh, the pungi, as it gives a very bad sound, it gives a very unpleasant sound. So yes, I am repeating again. Okay, once you just Hear it properly, listen to it properly. Okay, I'm repeating the first uh, from the beginning only. Okay. Good morning, everyone. 
So now I'm repeating the thing. Here we we are introduced to Aurangzeb, Aurangzeb who banned the playing of musical instrument called pungi. And, and why he actually banned this musical instrument pungi? As it gives a very unpleasant sound. It gives a very a uh, bad sound. No one actually likes the sound. It is not at all attractive sound. So now pungi became a generic name for the reeded noise maker. It was given a particular name for this pungi, and it was like noise maker just create noise it doesn't give any uh, peace to anyone so many people at first thought that as aurangzeb has banned the pungi but many people thought that after some day this pungi will return again as people will need this pungi afterwards but later on um, it doesn't uh, later on what happened a barber who has a very good relation with the royal royal uh, royalty the people of uh, the uh, or uh, he has a good access to the royalty royal palace so uh, and he he was he belongs to a professional his background is from a professional musician his family they were a professional music, musician though he was a barber but he, his family it was a very good musician so for that reason also he had some uh, like uh, he just liked music a lot he knows about music a lot so now barber when he found that this pungi uh, was actually just uh, banned as it was banned people does not like the sound of the this uh, musical instrument so he decided that he will change this uh, the sound of the pungi uh, and make it little bit pleasant one so that people will like it so what he did he brought a long pipe he brought a long pipe as it has natural hollow stem uh, uh, hollow means hole on the both side of the Pipe on the both side of the pipe, like you can see, flute. Yeah, it already had a natural uh, hollow, and it was longer. It was the even the size of the that uh, pipe was different from this pungi. It was longer and broader than the pungi. And then he made some seven holes on that pipe and started playing the pungi. While he st started playing, closing and opening some of this hole. He found that he realized that very soft and melodious sounds were produced by this pipe, and then he took this as he was successful in his work of uh, changing the sound of the pungi. So he took uh, he just took it to the uh, royal residence and he played this instrument in front of everyone there, and everyone were impressed with the sound of this instrument. Okay, and it was already uh, and the instrument was so different from pungi. Even its shape and size were so different from pungi pipe to this instrument. And then, as the stories goes, that how this pungi, uh, how this uh, uh, instrument was made and where it was played according. So, and from that, from this, uh, from lo looking those things properly, people decided to name as shahna because uh, as it was first played in the shah's chamber after making this beautiful instrument, the barber. Who has made the instrument? The barber. He has made the instrument, and he just went to the royal residence in the shah's chamber. He uh, played it for the first time there. So, and according to the story, uh, the name was changed. A uh, name was uh, the name of a pungi changed into a shahna, as it was first played in the shah's chamber, and it was played by a nai. Nai means barber. Clear, yeah, everyone. So in this way. Shehnai was actually uh, Shehnai came in this world. Clear everyone, the instrument came in this world. Okay, if you have any doubt, just reply it. Okay, I will uh, continue the other section. If you have any doubt in uh, understanding the first part, part just reply. Okay, so now you can see in your book the images of Pungi and Shehnai. This is so different, is not it? Okay. So now in the second part we will start. The sound of the shahnai began to be considered auspicious, and for this reason it is still played in temples and is an indispensable component of any not Indian wedding. So now the sound of shahnai was uh, began to be considered as a good uh, luck. You can say good luck. Okay. So now this uh, when as it created a very beautiful sound, very pleasant sound. So people, uh, thought, people found it that this uh, the sound of the shahnai uh, brings some good things, bring uh, gives some good luck to everyone. So and for this reason, today also we can see this shahnai is played in the 
temples and uh, in some north indian wedding also isn't it auspicious uh, auspicious means that brings some good fortune promise promise to bring some good fortune okay as a good luck you can say as a good luck okay so uh, you can also say shubh shubh work no in in hindi we say na no? shubh karya so similarly it is used in the good works and all okay so now for this reason and for that reason only it is still played in temples today we can see that chennai is played in temple and some weddings also and that is the reason why people play this um uh, shehnai in temples and weddings because it gives a very good promise a good fortune for everyone and the sound of the uh, the sound of this shehnai is also very much pleasant one actually gets attracted towards it and that's why even today we can see shehnai is played in temples and also in um you can say wedding and all okay after that in the past the shehnai was part of the noba or traditional ensemble of nine instrument found at royal court so now this shehna in the past in the past this shehna was actually was a part of a noba okay noba or a traditional ensemble of nine instrument noba means where you have nine instruments no no nine instrument no means in hindi we can say no it's nine isn't it so it is a uh, in a royal court you need to be there, there are some nine instrument okay indispensable means without which one work is incomplete like like without shehnai a marriage is incomplete okay without shehnai a marriage is incomplete so one need to have the shehnai this uh, shehnai in a marriage without this shehnai one cannot do any other work that is indispensable okay so now to in the past this shehnai was a part of that noba means nine instrument in the royal court there were some nine instrument and shehnai was also one of it a part of that noba okay no means nine so till recently it was used only in temples and weddings so till recently we have seen uh, shehnai used in temples and in weddings only but later on the credit for bringing this instrument onto the classical stage in wedding or you can say in uh, temple sana but later on uh, bismillah khan the credit of bringing this to the classical stage goes to bismillah khan bismillah khan he brought this instrument in front of the in the classical stage before we have harmonium and all tabla and all in the classical stage no those uh, instruments were played but this shehnai was not played only it was known for uh, marriage and for the weddings but when bismillah khan uh, came he brought this instrument and he has actually introduced this instrument in the classical stage okay clear everyone okay let's go to the third part if you have doubts you can reply it okay then as a five year now we will just learn about bismillah khan about the story of bismillah khan how bismillah khan actually uh, uh, has become so much popular today we all know bismillah khan so the as for in our mind bismillah khan the image of bismillah khan comes in our mind okay so as a five year old bismillah khan played billi danda near a pond in the ancient state of dumrao in bihar So uh, when he was five year old, Bismillah Khan he played Gilli Danda. You know Gilli Danda. Often many of you have even played Gilli Danda, isn't it? So uh, he was five year old uh, and he played Gilli Danda near a pond in the ancient state of Dumrao in Bihar. It, uh, in Dumrao, uh, he uh, in Bihar he is actually lives. Uh, he is born and brought up in Dumrao in Bihar. He is from Bihar and. Uh, as he was five year old, he just used to play Gilli Danda near a pond. He would regularly go to the nearby Bihari Ji temple to sing the Bhujpuri Chaita. At the end of which, he would earn a big letter weighing one point two five kg, a prize prize given by the local Maharaj. So he would he would actually when he was only five year old, he would regularly go to that nearby Bihari Ji temple. That is the temple. There was a temple. 
uh, and we sing Bhojpuri Chaita. Bhojpuri, we know it's a uh, language of Bihar, Bihar. And Chaita is actually a song. You can say a song that is played during the month of Chait in uh, you can say March in between March and April. Okay, uh, so during the month of March and April, a song they used to sing some song. The Bhojpuri in the temple they used to sing some uh, song there, and that is known as Bhojpuri Chaita. And this uh, Bismillah Khan he often he regularly visit the temple to sing that Bhojpuri Chaita. And why he actually loves to say, loves singing that? Because at the end he would be given a big laddu. You can say 1.25 kg a laddu, a big laddu. Weigh, it weighs one weigh 1.25 kilogram from the by the local maharaja. Okay, so uh, the local maharaja used to uh, provide him uh, laddu, and because. As he loved that laddu, and because of that, he every day he used to go to that temple, Biharaji temple, and he used to sing Bhujpuri Chaita there. Uh, and that was the reason how he actually he started loving uh, Shahnai and all, playing Shahnai and all. That is the reason. Only that that laddu has encouraged him a lot in learning those things, in uh, giving his uh, time, giving his whole heart to. Shahna, okay. So this happened eighty years ago, and the little boy has traveled far to on the high civilian award in India. And this thing happened some eighty years ago, and now today we can we can we know that this little boy, this Bismillah Khan, he has traveled far, far. He was not only uh, he was not he on lots of awards, and one of the highest civilian award in uh, India, that is the Bharat Ratna, was given to the Ustad Bismillah. Khan. Okay, he has become famous. That five-year-old boy, and today is almost eighty years, uh, eighty more than that. Um, he has uh, become world famous person. Today, everyone knows it. Though he is not alive, but everyone knows him today, isn't it? Okay. So after that, number four, we will go to number four. So he was born on twenty-one March, nineteen sixteen. Bismillah belongs to a well-known family of musicians from Bihar. His grandfather Rasul Baks Khan was the Shahnai Nawaz of the Bhojpur Hills Court. His father Paygambar Baks and other paternal ancestors were also great Shahnai players. So he was born Bismillah Khan. He was born on 21 March 1916, and he belongs to well-known family of musicians. Uh, his background, his background also. Uh, his uh, family background were also musician, so because of that reason also he has that quality in him uh, of loving the music and all. So his family, who are from Bihar, they were a well-known musician, and his grandfather, whose name was Rasul Baks Khan, he was the Shahnai Nawaz at that time of the Bhojpur Kings Court. Okay, so he was the Shahnai Nawaz. You can say Shahnai uh, very perfectly. And his father, whose name was Paygambar Bhats, and also other paternal ancestors, the paternal uh, relatives belong to his father's side. Paternal ancestors, they were all a great Shahnai players. So from that we can know that why Bismillah Khan is a Shahnai player, a good Shahnai player, because he, his uh, great grandparents, his paternal ancestors, all are actually a great Shahnai. Player, and that is the reason why he was he he was uh, he is also a great Shahnai player. They we know him as a Shahnai player. Clear, everyone? Okay, so let's go to number five. Okay, number five. After that, uh, the young boy took to music early in life. At the age of three, when his mother took him to his maternal uncle's house in Banaras, now Varanasi. Bismillah was fascinated watching his uncles practice the shahnai. So this young boy, he he took music early in life. Very uh, uh, when he was very small, from that day, that time onwards, from that uh, day onwards, he has taken music his life. Yes, he thought that music will be his life. And when he was on, at the, when he was only three years old. His mother once uh, she took him to his maternal uncle's house, maternal you can say mama's house, 
in Banaras, as we now today we call Varanasi. And there only he saw Bismillah Khan, he saw his uncle uh, playing the Shahnai. And he was so much attracted towards the Shahnai uh, that he also started accompanying uh, Bismillah Khan. Soon Bismillah started accompanying his uncle Ali Baksh to the Vishnu temple of Banaras, where Baksh was employed to play the Shahnai. And then as uh, when uh, Bismillah Khan he was only three years old, uh, he was taken to his maternal uncle's house uh, by his mother. And there we found that his uncle, that means his mama, he used to play Shahnai very, very properly, very nicely. And he was very much attracted towards that Shahnai. And from that day onwards, he started accompanying, accompanying his uncle to, uh, to the temple as his uncle was uh, employed to play the Shahnai in a temple. In the temple, his uncle, uh, he just, he used to play, he was actually an employee to work there. He just earned, his uh, earnings were from uh, playing the Shahnai in the temple. So he lived his uh, livelihood in such a way. And he every day, Bismillah Khan every day uh, accompanied his uncle to the Vishnu temple. Okay. So Ali Bakhs would play the Shahnai and Bismillah would sit captivated for hours on end. And Ali Bakhs, he would just play the Shahnai there. And Bismillah Khan, he will be totally captivated towards the sound of the Shahnai. Uh, he will be totally lost in his uh, in the playing of the Shahnai for almost uh, for an hour. Slowly, he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit pra pra practicing throughout the day. And when he, uh, when he found that when it was found by his uh, parents that he actually loved the Shahnai, uh, he is actually very much attracted towards the Shahnai. So later on, he was also given some. Uh, he, he was also taught Shahnai to play the Shahnai. So uh, he would be. He started getting lessons in playing the instrument, and he would sit practicing throughout whole the whole day. He would practice Shahnai uh, with his uncle. Okay. So he was also given uh, some lessons in playing the instrument, and he loved it so much that the whole day he will he will not be he will not at all get uh, irritated to play the shahnai. The whole day he will sit and he will just play the shahnai. He will practice playing the shahnai for years to come. The temple of Balaji and Mangla Maya and the banks of Ganga became the young patriot's favorite haunts where he could practice in solitude. And for almost one year, as he has started his practicing, learning Shahnai, for almost a year, uh, the temple of Balaji and Manglamaya and also the banks of Ganga has become his favorite place. You can say favorite place where he can sit in a solitude, in a, uh, uh, sit lonely and play the Shahnai. Because uh, Bismillah Khan, uh, he believed that these uh, places will give him much more time to play the Shahnai properly so that he can give his perfect uh, performance, good performance. And that's why he did not want anyone to disturb him. And that's why he has made some very uh, important, he has made some places where he can actually uh, sit and practice Shahnai properly without anyone's disturbance. And that was Temple of Balaji, Manglamiya, and also Bats of Ganga. That became a favorite place where he can actually uh, practice in solitude. Okay, clear everyone. If you have any doubt, just write it down. Okay, and then uh, the flowing waters of the Ganga inspired him to improvise the invent ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shahnai. So now this flowing, whenever he used to sit in uh, sit in the um, solitude, means lonely place. Okay, alone solitude, alone and lo without anyone's disturbance. Okay. So now, this flowing, the flowing water of Ganga, it gives him encouragement. It inspires him to, uh, like, uh, to practice more and more, to create some new, uh, new, new tone on it. Okay. So he improvises, means create and perform music. So he started creating new music, new ragas. Ragas, you can say, uh, like some Indian classical music, which has some uh, different style different tone and all okay so here 
uh, what he do he just as he love the place ganga he will sit there and that flowing of water whenever he will hear the sound of the water as we know the water also creates some music is not it actually produce some music so this water uh, of the, the flowing waters of ganga it actually uh, <coughs> encourage him to uh, to invent new ragas to invent new music from this a uh, new tone from this shahnai and people have thought that shahnai <coughs> <coughs> sorry many people they thought that shahnai uh, cannot give some different tone it can give only one particular tone many people have started inventing some new ragas new uh, music from the shahnai so that's why he used to just spend his time most of the time in some lonely place and he will just play he will just create some new music with the help of the shahna okay so number 6 now let's go to number 6 so at the age of 14 bismillah accompanied his uncle to the alhabad music conference at the end of his recital ustad fayez khan uncle uh, to the alhabad music conference and there he just showed his performance he gave his performance there and there ustad fayez khan he did he just gave him encourage him by saying that if you will work hard you will just reach to the top with the opening of the all india radio in lucknow in 1938 came bismillah's big break and bismillah he got his first big break for the first time he played uh, he gave his performance in the all india radio in lucknow he has given his performance in the radio in 1938 and that was his big break it was a it was actually liked by many people he soon became an awesome heard sahnai player on radio and soon he became uh, everyone started hearing everyone started hearing to his playing sahnai hearing uh, him on the radio as he played sahnai every uh, every day that he has a, a program bismillah khan Uh, had a program of playing the shahnai in all in the radio and he gave his performance there every day and there are many people who often heard him playing the shahnai there were many uh, people loving him a lot and then in this way he got a chance in all in the radio for the first time okay now when india gained independence on 15 august 1947 Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to greet the nation with the shahna. So when India, as India gained independence on 15 August 1947, Bismillah Khan he was the one, the first Indian to greet the nation with the shahna. He played shahna that day, and he gave his full heart to the shahna. He poured his heart out into rag kafi from the red folk to an audience which included Mahatma Gandhi and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. who later gave his famous prize to Krishna state so bismillah khan he was the first uh, citizen uh, to uh, to greet the nation on uh, on 15 august 1947 he played uh, shahnai there and he gave his full heart in the shahnai he just played rag kafi rag kafi is also uh, a hindustani classical music it is a classical music kirtan bhajan we can say He uh, who gave a very famous speech that is Christ the Destiny speech at the time, okay? and that time only he was the one who was the first citizen who greeted the nation by playing his shahnai. Bismillah Khan gave his has given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. So Bis- Bismillah Khan he has given many uh, performance, many memorable performance. not only in india but also in abroad outside india also he has given lots of uh, performance and everyone liked him a lot everyone liked his performance a lot his first trip abroad was to afghanistan where king jahir shah was so taken in by the mesto that he gifted him priceless persian pur- carpets and other souvenirs okay now uh, his first trip to abroad uh, as he was performing in india but in his first trip to abroad was to afghanistan he went afghanistan and where king jahir shah the king of that uh, of afghanistan 
he was so attracted towards his playing this uh, shehnai that he gifted him a very precious gift a porcelain carpet which was very costly uh, precious gift and many other gifts was provided to him souvenirs you can say things given in memory of a person or a place he was given many souvenirs by king jahir sah the king of Af afghanistan was not the only one to be fascinated with bismillah's music so here it was not only bismillah uh, king jahir sah who was attracted towards bismillah khan uh, music there were many other people who were attracted towards his music and they were we can see here film director vijay bhat was so impressed after hearing bismillah play at a festival that he named the film after the instrument called goon jukhi shehnai so it was not only king jahir sah who was attracted uh, who was impressed with bismillah khan but there were many other who were impressed and from that one of the film guests by after hearing this bismillah playing the shehnai at a festival at a program and then he named the film after this instrument goon jukhi shehnai and then he made a film and the name of the film he kept it after the name after this instrument called goon jukhi shehnai and the film was hit and one of the film bismillah khan's composition dil ka khilana hai toot gaya turn out to be a nationwide chart buster and uh, in this movie in this film gunjuti shehnai as the film was super duper hit there was one composition of bismillah khan and that was dil ka khilana hai toot gaya and that composition was actually a chart buster it was a very hit chart buster okay it was a hit one nationwide chart buster means super duper hit you can say okay record breaking So, despite this huge success in the cellulo cell celluloid world, Bismillah Khan's ventures in the film music were limited to two. Now, he has uh, in uh, Bismillah Khan. We have never seen Bismillah Khan in many of the film uh, world. He has given one or two uh, performances in in the film and all. And rather than that, he has never seen in the movies or any Hindi film and all. And, as though it was a very successful one though it was a hit one super duper hit uh, movie gunjuti shehnai where his composition was also a hit one but still he has never seen in this film world again there were two or three only celluloid means old fashioned way of referring to films okay and then bismillah khan's ventures in film music were limited to two so bismillah khan some projects that often involve some risks they ha they have some project that were limited to two only and then vijay bhat's gunjuti shehnai and vikram shrinivas shrinivas kannada kannada venture sanadi apna so this were the this were two of the film that uh Bismillah Khan has given his composition in this film. Rather than that, he was not seen in the film world. I just can't come to terms with the artificiality and glamour of the world. See, he says with emphasis. So he gives very stress on his world that he can't actually uh, think about that. He can't actually believe in the artificial world and glamour of film world. He doesn't like the film world because. according to him film world is just an artificial one it doesn't have any reality on it and he doesn't like the glamour of the film world and that is the reason why we uh, we can we have not seen him uh, in more than other movies we have not seen his composition in more than other movies he has given his life after this two movie gunjuti shehnai and one kannada movie that is sanadhi apna okay i hope you have understood everyone then awards and recognition came thick and fast bismillah khan became the first indian to be invited to perform at the prestigious lincoln center hall in the united states of america he also took part in the world exposition in montreal in the kings art festival and in the osaka trade fair okay not understand which part priya 
which part you have not understood you just write it down so that i can repeat which part priya which paragraph number eight Okay, I will repeat number eight. As Bismillah Khan, he has given many great performance, many memorable performance in uh, India and also other countries. Not only in India, he is not he was not famous only in India, but also in other countries. Okay, so uh, his first he he first uh, his first trip to abroad was to Afghanistan. He has first gone out, uh, as he was performing in India, but. For the first time, he has performed in Afghanistan outside India. That was his first trip to Afghanistan. There, King, as uh, Jahir Shah was the king of that of uh, Afghanistan at that time, King Jahir Shah, he was so much uh, attracted towards this, uh, towards the uh, playing uh, Shehnai, towards the Bismillah Khan's playing Shehnai, that he has given him some gift there, a very priceless gift, very precious gift. Person carpet and many other souvenirs. Okay, souvenirs means on memory of some person or place when we give some gifts to someone that is souvenirs. Okay, so he was given lots of gifts by King Jahir Shah because he was attracted towards Bismillah Khan's performance. And it was it was not only King Jahir Shah who was uh, who liked Bismillah Khan's performance. There were many other people, and among them there was film director Vijay Bhar, as we all know. We have been watching his movie a lot, many movies. So Vijay Bhatt, uh, he was the film director. He was also the one who was attracted towards, impressed towards Bismillah Khan's music. And he he has heard him in one of the festivals where he was actually giving his performance. And then he thought that he will uh, actually uh, direct one movie that will be named after this instrument called Shehnai and he named the movie Goon Juthi Shehnai and in that movie Bismillah Khan has also given one one of his performance and that is what Dilka Khilana has stood there. He has given his performance there and it was a super duper hit performance. The movie was also super duper hit and the sing song composition of Bismillah Khan was also super duper hit. But Still, uh, though this, he has actually given two of the movies, he has given his composition, he has given his performances in two movies. And after that, he was not seen in any other movies. He was not seen in the film world. And why? Because according to him, he, like, he feels that film world is actually just an artificial world. You have nothing reality on that world. Only a glamour. So you can see the glamour. You are attracted towards the glamour. But actually, if you will go inside the film world, there is, uh, it's just an artificial world. You do not have any, uh, do not, you do not have any pure in it. So that is the reason why uh, Bismillah Khan, Gunjmit, the sound, no, in Hindi, Gunjna. This is the Hindi word, Gunjuti Shahnai. Gunjna means the sound of Shahnai, you can say, okay, the sound. Gunjna, we say, okay. So, um, Sanadhi Apna and Gunjuti world, um, glamorous world of the film side, okay? And that's why he never tried also. But, and he was uh, number nine. Now we will go to number nine. Understood, Priya? I hope you have understood this part. If you have any doubt, you have to come, okay? So, awards and recognition came thick and fast. And then from that time onwards, he was started, he has started getting lots of awards and lots of recognition. Uh, and uh, people started to like, not only liked by Indian, but also by other people, uh, the people of other countries. So he was invited, he was the first Indian who was invited to perform at this prestigious Lincoln Center in United States of America. So there also he has given his performance. He was invited by them. And also he took part in the World Exposition in Montreal in the Kings Art Festival and in Osaka trade fair. So he has given lots of his performance in United States of America. He also took part in the World Exposition uh, in Montreal, in the Keynes Art Festival, 
and also in the Osaka Trade Fair. We often see this in the TV and our games at festivals, some festivals where we see uh, where our Indian artists, artists and uh, famous people are invited in this show to give them some you know, awards and all. No? So in this uh, festival, he was also invited and he has given his best performance there. And he has earned lots of awards. Okay. So well known did he become international that an auditorium in Tehran was named after him, Tahar Moshiki Ustad Bismillah Khan. And he was became so famous internationally. In the international world, outside India, he was become so famous that in Tehran, Tehran, there is an auditorium, and that auditorium was named after Bismillah Khan, and it was named uh, Tahar Mosik Ustad Bismillah Khan. The name of that auditorium was, was Tahar Mosik Ustad Bismillah Khan. So he has become so much famous in outside country. Okay. So national awards like the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, Bhushan and also the Bharat Ratna was given to him. So these are the awards were conferred to Bismillah Khan for his best performance in everywhere. In 2001, Bismillah Khan was awarded India's best highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna. So in 2001, uh, Bismillah Khan was also given the India's highest uh, civilian award, that is the Bharat Ratna. With his coveted award resting on his chest and his eyes blinking with rare happiness, he said. And when he got the award, when the awards were uh, just put on his uh, chest and uh, it was coveted, the awards were happiness, he just said some words, he said some sentence for each and every people of the world. He said that, all I would like to say is teach your children music. This is Hindustan's richest tradition. Even the West is now coming to learn our music. And then with his shining eyes, with happiness, with that uh, rare happiness, he said that he want he said that to the, to to everyone, not only to the Indian, to even to the other people outside India. He said that teach your children music. Just to uh, the they, uh, he advised them to teach their children music. As for him, music, that means the classical music is the richest tradition in, of India. And this is not, uh, and this uh, richest tradition should be preserved properly. And to preserve that one, we need to, we should actually teach our children those classical music and all. And also he said that, even the West, even the people from the other countries are coming to learn our music. When other people are coming to learn our music, why cannot our students, our children can learn, our Indian children can learn this music. So he just advised each and every people, each and every member to teach their children music so that we can preserve our uh, tradition, our richest tradition properly. Okay, clear everyone? So, in spite of having traveled all over the world, Hans, he has traveled a lot, all over the world, all over the world he has traveled a lot. And he is only, he is actually called as Hansa. Uh, and, but though he has traveled all over the world, but still uh, Bismillah Khan is very much fond of Banaras and Dumra. And they rename him, uh, according to him, they are the most wonderful towns of the world. Wherever he go, wherever, uh, if he, which is his birthplace and also Banaras, they are the favorite, the most favorite place of Bismillah Khan, which he would not forget in his life. So he, he just love this place, he's fond of this place. So once what happened, a student of his once wanted him to head a Shehnai school in the USA. And the student promised to recreate the atmosphere of Banaras by replicating the temples there. So now once a student in America, USA, uh, as he has, he has also preached his teach, uh, music in other places also. So a student of his, once he wanted, uh, he actually requests Bismillah Khan just to stay in USA and just to, uh, to teach the uh, students there to teach music 
there by staying in USA forever. And he also told him, he also promised him that he will recreate the atmosphere of uh, recreate the atmosphere of USA into Banaras and Dumrao. He will recreate, he will just make it like Dumrao and Banaras. When it was uh, requested by a student, uh, and then what he said, did he stay there or what he did? Okay, after that he said, when the student promised to recreate the atmosphere of Banaras by replicating the temples, he even told that he will make temples there. He will uh, recreate the atmosphere of USA into uh, Dumrao and Banaras. At that, uh, Bismillah Khan said, but Khan Saab asked him if he would be able to transport River Ganga as well. And that Khan Saab, that means Bismillah Khan, he said, he just uh, said, he kept the word, okay, I will stay here. If you want me to stay here, if you want me to teach here, be the head of the music and teach the students music, I will stay here, but only in one condition that if you can transport river river Ganga as well. Though you will recreate the atmosphere of Banaras by uh, by just making it like Banaras, uh, making the temples and all, but if but I will stay here only in one condition, and that is that if you can transport River Ganga here, if you if you will be able to transport River Ganga here, then I will remain here for ever. And then the student laughed. Of course, that cannot be done. Okay, so that is how we can know. That is where we can know that how much uh, Bismillah Khan was fond of this place and even the River Ganga. He was very much attached. Attract, attach with these places. So he, wherever he goes, he will never forget this place, and he will just like to be, like to just spend his time in this place. Okay. So later he remembered to have said that is why whenever I am in a foreign country, I keep yearning to see Hindustan. While in Mumbai, I think of Banaras, only Banaras, and the Holy Ganga. And while in Banaras, I miss the unique Mathas Dumra. And then he said that, and that is the reason why uh, he loved these places so much that wherever he goes and whatever he do, whenever he he is he is in foreign country, he always thinks of he always thinks of miss this miss to see the Hindustan. He always thinks of Hindustan, and whenever he is in Mumbai, he always miss the place. Banaras and the Holy Ganga, and whenever he is in Banaras, he always miss the unique Mathas Dumla. So he loved those places a lot. So wherever he go, wherever he gives his performance, he just return back to his own place. As that is for him, it is a very peaceful place for him. Okay. So here uh, we can see that. Uh, in the readers that rises from the readers digest uh interview was taken from by shekhar gupta and bismillah khan has replied to his question let's say shekhar gupta he asked when partition happened didn't you and your family think of moving to pakistan and then when he asked him as bismillah khan he was a muslim so shekhar gupta he asked him that when partition happened between uh, pakistan and india uh, then he asked him, didn't uh, Bismillah Khan and his family be thought of just going to moving to Pakistan, leaving India as he is a, as he is a Muslim? So Bismillah Khan at that he replied, God forbid me. He said, no, God forbid me. God just excuse me. Me, leave Banaras. He said that I will leave Banaras. No, that can never be happen. I cannot leave Banaras. Never. He said, never. I went, went to Pakistan once. He said, yes, I went to Pakistan once. I crossed the border and I crossed the border of border just to say I have been to Pakistan and just and I crossed the border and just to say all the people that yes, I have been to Pakistan once. But I do not want to stay there because I cannot leave Banaras. I cannot leave Hindustan. I, uh, I was there for about an hour and I I spent my time in Pakistan for one an hour, for about an hour. And there I said Namaskar to the Pakistanis. He said that I said Namaskar to the Pakistanis and Salaam Walikum to the Indians. I had a good laugh. And he just had a good laugh there. And But he cannot leave his place 
India. He loved his place where he was born and brought up. He never wanted to leave his place. He was so much attached to these places. He said what in one of his uh, interview with Shikhar Gupta. Okay, that is in October 2005. So that in that way we can know that how much uh, Bismillah Khan loves India, how much he loved Banaras and Dumrao, how much he loved the Holy River Ganga, and he has always uh, been recite his recite his uh, performance recite his Shahnai there itself. So Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India. So from this we can see that Ustad Bismillah Khan's life was a perfect example of a rich cultural heritage of India. Okay? He has actually uh, preserved his uh, culture very properly. He has preserved the heritage. Uh, heritage, the meaning of heritage, you can write down the history uh, or the traditions and qualities that a country or society has had for many years. So he had preserved that history, like playing the uh, Shehna, that was our history. But he has preserved this history he has preserved the play, places so uh, the things so properly that even today we are we know we are learning and that's why we are learning about Bismillah Khan today, isn't it? So uh, he has set a very good example. He has set a very perfect example in his life of the rich cultural heritage of India, and and he also tell others to preserve the heritage of India. This one as as he has set an example for each and every. Hindu or Muslim people, though he was a devout Muslim, devout Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, believing strongly in his religion and uh, obeying all the rules and laws of his religion. Though he was a devout Muslim, he believes uh, in his religion strongly. He believes he uh, follow all his laws and culture, all his law rules, uh, obey all the rules and uh, laws of his uh, of his uh, religion. But still, being a Muslim also, we have not seen such a person who can actually very perfectly play Shehnai every morning at the Kashi Vishwanath temple. Going to Kashi Vishwanath temple, he played the Shehnai. And that is one of the examples set by Bismillah Khan, that being a Muslim also, he is a, he can, he has kept the, he has actually preserved the cultural heritage of India. Okay, so... In this way, we just completed our chapter, The Sound of Music Part 2, that is Bismillah Khan. Do you have any problem in uh, understanding those things? Do you just reply it? If you have understood, I hope you have understood. It's very easy one. It's not so tough to understand it. If you will read it, if you will read the lesson properly, you will understand it. Okay. So read it properly. And okay, one more thing. You just find a very short, some short question answers from here. Okay. There are lots of short question answers from here. Uh, what are the awards uh, given to Bismillah Khan? No. When did Bismillah Khan got uh, the Bharat Ratna? And then uh, at what age he started, if he was born, no, when he was born, at what um, age he, you can say, he was given, like, he was uh, accompanied to Allahabad, no, some small short question answer, very important here, you read and just find it out, all the short question answers, write it down and just send, the, uh, send it to, in the group, okay? Yes, the grammar homework, I will give you the answer in the group today itself. Okay, till evening I will read. Okay. I hope everyone I have understood. You just find it out, find out all the short question answers. Okay, the other question answer I will give you. But please try, write down all the short question answer from the lesson. Okay. Others I will give you tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Let me see when I will get the time. I will give you. Okay. Clear everyone? And grammar homework, whatever I have given you that day, it will be the answer will be given. Uh, I will just uh, give you the answer in the group. Okay, then you can correct it. And then uh, today, okay, so completed for today. So I hope you have understood. And yes, uh, now at twelve thirty, I will start class ten grammar classes. That is uh, correct tense form of verb. If you want to, if you have any doubts there, you can see the, you can come at 12.30 also. We will be live there.
doing the correct attempts from above. I have already done it in the class for you all. But still, if you have doubt, if you want to see the video again, you can just watch it, okay? So, till then, bye students. Take care and complete your homework also. Okay.